Hello and welcome to this Omsum first online course. I'm very, very grateful for you being here today and trusting me with choosing choosing this course on um, I chose my parents. And first I'll start with why this is important for me. I had traveled for a while. I had lived abroad. I had lived by myself. I had achieved a lot of my dreams, my, my freedom ideas of how the life should be lived. And uh, there was always something that was um, a little bit missing. You know, when I'd come home, my meditation practices and, uh, and whatever I learned in the world, the spirituality, all of that, they didn't work that well when I met my parents. Um, we would still get in the fights. I wouldn't be able to uh, kind of take their opinion and you know and, and share my opinion. There was a lot of hurt and guilt and what I later found out also a lot of shame. So I took a little little step, one step after another to improve, to make the first of all, to make the priority. Uh, I called it that time fixing my relationships with my parents. You know, I call it a different way. I'm just, um, it's more giving myself opportunity to explore my parents and understanding why I chose this path, these parents. So on this course, I want to share um, how it worked, why it worked and go through meditation and journaling to really, really embrace those two wings that we have that um, made us fly our mother and father and um, two things that I would love to share first of all it was uh, one time when my mom was visiting me in uh, Florida and I knew we have to have that huge conversation there was so much like I had I thought with my brain and I know at that time with my brain with my mind I had forgiven her uh, for what things happened when I was a child she was a she was a single mother raising a child in a post-Soviet Union, always working. Um, there's, there's nothing to blame her about, but I grew up by myself. I've often felt lonely. She uh, often overworked, so she was tired. And when I approached her, it was often like, a no, like go away. Or uh, I was punished as a child when, uh, when I did something wrong. So there was a lot of hurt and there was a lot of shame because I would never admit that punishment part it was very, very difficult to admit that to my friends. Um, but, you know, like as a kid, you know, I was I was punished. Um, so, yeah, there was there was a lot of that. And when um, I needed to talk to her about that, I know that, um, you know, like with my mind, I had forgiven, but I needed to have that conversation and I knew my mother is alive so I can actually do that. I don't need to uh, take this session with a chair and, and you know, do that, which is like if your parents are, are you know, have passed away, do that. But uh, I had the chance she's alive. So it was a, it was a disaster at first. It, like I'm not, I'm not going to do, you know, like rose petals and, and everything and, and uh, uh, rose tinted glasses for this one. We were crying, we were shouting. Um, there was a day of, of silence, a silent treatment towards me. And I was, you know, like I was really pissed that she has traveled so far. Now she's, you know, like angry. And why did I have to like, you know, initiate the conversation? But what I heard in this conversation was her actually asking me forgiveness for, you know, like for the things that where she hurt me. She knew them really well. And she had thought that she had actually asked forgiveness, which she probably had uh, as a Christian to, you know, like in a church, but never to me. Um, so it was very, I remember the freeing um, feeling and the freedom and what happened straight away. My relationships with my uh, um, my relationships, my dating life, relationships with men in my life, they improved. They improved like like skyrocketing. I could be more open. There was something energetically that shifted uh, by receiving that stronger bound with my mother. And I'd say at that time, because you know, like I was living abroad, we had that very close moment there. We recorded a podcast about this as well. And 
there were many things happened and and I perceive her as a fellow human being being on a journey um, what happened later I, I have tried a couple of times you know like I am so much in this growth mindset and I'm I love to share it and I want my like first of all my family to be you know like like the best of themselves not for me but for themselves because I see it like how much amazing things it does in, in your life and and it wasn't also a pushing, but I would offer her like, hey, mom, you know, like there's this really great coach. Maybe you would love to, you know, like have a month in her group and, and just maybe find some new ideas for your life or business and this and that. And I would constantly offer her, but like a little bit, not from me, because I cannot coach my mom, uh, family's family. And um, she would be like, maybe I'll think about it in a week. She's like, no. I offered her another thing where I thought maybe if she comes to the retreat where this coach is giving lectures, maybe there she would be like, hey, you know, like I want to really shift my life and, and do good things for myself. And it took her a while to kind of like, again, like think about this. And I'm like, I'm thinking this retreat is a beautiful opportunity for whoever can come and just be there in the environment, even though if there's helping in the kitchen because you can hear things around and be with people. And you know, for her it's like, okay, I'll take like some days to think about it. And then in the fifth day she calls and says like, you know what, I decided no. And for me it's like, oh, okay. And there's this, I know that's a part of me that wants to fix my mother, that wants the best for my mother, but that also needs to let go of that fixing. And I knew that very well, but you know, one one thing is like know it here the other is like feel it and live it through your body so this time i was i was grateful that she called and said no and straight away i i journaled and i allowed um i was like i need the best helper for the retreat and i described it and i'm not kidding within a minute um, I was on a call and there was this girl who was the best retreat helper ever when i was sitting in a retreat I clearly knew like I could have ever like if if it was my mother there it, it just wasn't the right person like that would be a disaster in a way of like how um, much I would have to do there and how little I would learn the trust and how little I would enjoy the, actually the process of, of organizing and being in a retreat as a host and, and I was very, very grateful that I trusted to let go of that part which wants to fix my mom. And I know that she's got her own journey. And uh, we kept the, you know, like nice, beautiful relationship. Um, and I got a beautiful retreat helper. So both ways, it worked out miraculously. So this is something that I also want to see that it's not only like, it doesn't work the way like I fixed relationship with my parents and now it's perfect. No, I fixed my inner, um, my inner kind of knowing about my parents, like what I think, what I, what I perceive, what I want to do with them, what I expect from them, what I expect from me of being with my parents and other things align. And that is very, very powerful. And the second one was with my dad. Um, and like, I'll share more when we do this, uh, these sessions. My relationship with my dad, if you ask me, is like, eh, I don't know, like it's normal. Like we sometimes talk once a year uh, because most of the time I'm abroad and he's not someone who's gonna call me um, when I'm abroad. I just, when I come here, I visit him, I say hi. And uh, when I was going through this podcast recording, um, I was very really open with what I, you know, like what I'm feeling and all that. and has this relationship and of course at, at some point I think and I shared it on a podcast as well um, it's more the idea that I should have had a better relationship with my fa father it's not that we don't have it but it's like well maybe as a kid I missed him when I heard other kids saying that oh they spend their weekend with their parents and you know it's two parents or or maybe just with their dad I missed it but then from the other hand when I think now, I'm like, no, it's, it's all good, you know? Um, he was there when I needed him. And since, what I, since I love where I am now, it has been the perfect relationship with my father, right? Uh, but what happened this summer was that um, I was moving out of my friend's place 
uh, I had to move out, so I had to find a new place. I was looking for it, and I do trust in the universe a lot. But sometimes I do need a backup plan. I'm just a human being. So when I feel that I'm, I'm going in the mood when I start stressing and being frustrated and, and not, not like trusting 100%, I also ask myself like what is the like a little backup mode that I can use to be again in that nice vibration and this time it was yeah it was about about a place where to live and I thought you know what my dad has a huge house and I could live there he built that house for me that's what I know from my mom from my uh, from them that he was building this house for me when I was a little kid uh, but I never lived there well I think first three months of my life or something like that but uh, and I was like, okay, I need to ask this question. And also out of curiosity to know like, like what would he say? You know, like what, what would be there? Um, and it was a casual conversation, just a summer day. And I'm like, well, dad, you know, like I have to move out from a friend's place. Um, like, can I, um, you know, like, can I live here? Like as a partly as a joke, but for me, it wasn't a joke because I was testing, but it's sometimes easier for me to say things as jokes. I was like, like, would you know, like, would it be a, uh, possible uh, for a couple of months till I find my place if I don't play, find something straight away for me to live here? And he was like, he did the same move, and I said, like, how is your relationship with your parents? And I'm like, you know, like, no, yeah, they're okay. And he was like, like, you know, like, take, you know, like, the house is yours. And I don't think he ever noticed. And also, I now recording this I feel like actually telling him it meant a lifetime to me it meant it meant that thing that I belong that I'm needed that I wanted that I'm loved like all in one this container like these emotions and I was like wow I'm like if there's anything if if anything goes wrong I have this place where to come and I'm like, I'm safe. I can keep flying. I can now fly like way up. So uh, I don't remember it was that day or maybe I had written it before, but I had manifested in my journal, um, which is writing down the perfect place where I want to live. And the same day I walked into that place and I said yes, and I moved in. It wasn't my dad's place, but I could go back on the vibrational mode of really being okay I have this grounding I have this backup and here we go up 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 um, and manifesting the best so fixing relationships with your parents or allowing your inner work allowing that part which is okay I want to fix my mother I let it go oh I need the grounding from my father I ask a question and I fly it's it's something that you own to yourself, I promise. And uh, it's been life-changing for me. So in this course, I'll share meditations and writing exercises that can help you to reclaim those parts, to be together. And then if you feel after, this is not, I'm not a psychotherapist, but if you feel after that you want to work with someone, that is the way, the therapy is the way, I promise you, you'll never regret it. So thank you for being here on this course. It's a big pleasure for me, for you joining it. Ciao.